Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here with your daily devotional. I want to read five verses that I think might radically change our lives today, okay? Uh, why? Well, because they call us, they invite us. No, they beckon us. They summon us, okay, to be proactive and about the set of our sails, the disposition of our hearts. Uh, and this is one of those kind of things that when your feet hit the floor every single morning, most of us do this pre-coffee and we do it without much thought. We're sort of getting up and it's time to make the donuts. And so we sort of sputter around the house on automatic pilot. And <clears throat> there have been times when I've actually, before my feet hit the floor, I've actually thought to myself, all right, what kind of day? Am I going to have what's the disposition of my heart toward God, toward others, uh, toward this wonderful uh, person who I share a household with, my wife, and toward the gospel itself? Am I going to believe this? Am I going to walk in this? And Psalm 100, which you probably are familiar with, but I'm going to beg you not to allow familiarity to breed indifference here. Um, listen to this as I read this. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. So here are all of these imperatives already. He starts with telling us to shout. Now, most of us have been raised in, if we've been raised in Western churches, especially you know Protestant churches, mainline Protestant churches, um, we would read this voice, uh, this verse rather as, speak joyfully to the Lord, or perhaps even mumble joyfully to the Lord. And, and this is, is two things that are unnatural for most of us, shouting and shouting joyfully. And we've divorced some of us, our faith, from these two things. We don't shout much anymore. And if we do, it's usually when we're mad. Hmm are uh, at a football game or a basketball game or something. But to shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth, to serve the Lord with gladness, another imperative, come and serve him. But don't just serve him checking the box. Don't just serve him thinking you're balancing out the moral scales and then maybe he'll be nice to you after that and give you some of the things that you're on your wish list for God to give you. No, serve the Lord with gladness. <laughs> Come before him. In other words, don't stay away from him. Come before him with joyful singing, all right? So I love it. We're coming to the end of the year. I love that movie. Some of you know the one. Joy to the world. You know, I'm just excited for that song. I love that song. That's from Psalm, that's inspired by Psalm 98. Just a couple Psalms ahead of this. The, this one we're reading here, but Psalm 100. But this is what God's people are to be marked by. Yeah. Shouting joyfully, <laughs> serving the Lord joyfully, and coming before him with joyful singing. Oh. Verse three, know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. And this just reminds me of Genesis 1.1, which I've said before, um, is probably the most offensive verse in the entire Bible to the non-believer. Why? Because it posits the notion that we aren't self-created or that we aren't just some random co-location of atoms and chemicals, but there actually is a God who's a creator who made us, and we're on the creation side of that equation. That is, God is on one side and all of creation is on the other side, and that's where we are. We're created beings. Not just random beings, but created being, designed beings. And that's a mind blower, man. And, and for people who don't want there to be a God, that's offensive in many ways. So much follows from that. Uh, but know that the Lord himself is God, verse three. It is he who made us and we not, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So I'm not the designer of me. And the good news is, see, I can't bear that burden anyway. Uh, that's one of the things that I think is broken in our world right now, is that people are trying to assume 
burdens that are far too heavy for them, burdens that they were never designed to bear. There is a God, and I'm not him. There is a God, and you're not him. The great news is that we don't have to bear the burden of trying to be God because he's the real, he's the real God. He, he, and he knows us fully and loves us fully. This is amazing. We're his people and we're the sheep of his pasture, verse 3 says. I love the way that the Bible constantly compares us to sheep. Um, you'll probably never see sheep uh, doing a lot of tricks, you know, like they don't just don't have the skill set like dogs do. Um, uh, and they, it's not about will like with cats where it's like, no, I won't do that. No, sheep not only don't understand what you're saying and can't do what you want them to do. They just, they don't have the capacity. They're just bereft of that. And I don't have the capacity to make myself one of God's people, but he does. He can make me one of his people. And that's why it's such a powerful thing, a beautiful thing that our Bibles teach us that he's chosen and called those who are his own. Ah, and he will hold you fast. You don't have to hold you fast. He will hold you fast. He will hold me fast. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And now here, this is so appropriate for this week. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. All of this is, these are, these are prescribed things for you and I to do in response to God. And I love that about the Psalms. They don't just speak to us, they speak for us. Uh, as the old church father Athanasius said, uh, they, 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 they drive us into God's throne room, which is a beautiful place for us to be. And they say you and they teach us that you can come there with thanksgiving, not not afraid that he's going to cast us out. No, he will in no wise cast you out. He delights for his children to come to him. Would you go to him today? You know, enter his gates with thanksgiving. We have a place. We have someone to offer our thanksgiving to. We have somewhere to direct our thanks. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't know what people who do, who don't believe in God or re reject God or who live as if God doesn't matter. I don't know who they turn their thanksgiving toward. It seems so unfulfilling to me to think of gathering around a table to give thanks for any meal, and just to sit there and go, "We are thankful," without giving thanks and completing the experience of the meal by being thankful to the one that provided it to us. Enter his courts with praise, give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations, our generation as well. Yeah, even 2020 this year that I'm recording this, I have no idea when you're watching this, but I'm recording this in one of the strangest years of my entire lifetime, probably not one of the strangest years in the history of the earth, but certainly one of the strangest years in my lifetime. And yet the Lord here is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. And his faithfulness is to all generations. Ah, that's inspiring to me. I hope that is to you. I hope that sets your heart in the direction of giving thanks to the Lord, the King. He's good, I tell you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for who you are, your kindness, your generosity to us. Open our eyes, Lord, to see with astonishment and wonder how amazingly kind and generous you have been to us. All of us, each and every one of us, Lord. Um, Lord, may uh, this uh, gratitude that floods our hearts turn us toward you, that we might express with song and with our approach to you and our bowing before you, and yes, even the occasional shout to you, Lord, 
Ah, our thanksgiving to you. Pray this in the name of our beautiful Redeemer, Jesus. Amen and amen. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Keggy. Thank you.